Hey, what's going on guys? This is Jake at That Fit Friend, and today I'll be reviewing the Advances Apex Power 1.5. So three pros that I have with this model is number one, if you are looking for that shoe that is hyper focused on deadlifting, few models I think are gonna really compare to this shoe and how designed it is for that activity. So whether you're pulling conventionally or sumo deadlifting, this model works exceptionally well with this grip on the outsole. So if you're trying to drive into the feet, for example, laterally, this grip of the shoe does a really good job. And now, while I'm not necessarily only a sumo deadlifter, we see athletes like Deadlift Panda pulling over 700 pounds in the shoe, sumo, so. I don't think most of us are gonna have slip issues in this model, and if you're looking for that barefoot shoe that is really optimized for deadlifting specifically, I think this can be an awesome pick to look into. The second pro that I have with this shoe is I like the lateral sidewalls here, and so if you wanna use this shoe like me outside of just deadlifting, so for example, I've been really trying to push this shoe for more athletic style training, these can come in handy when doing more lateral work. So I like, for example, when doing skater strides, how these lateral sidewalls help give you additional support. And so when you're also driving through that forefoot and driving yourself laterally, this helps give you, I think, a little bit more support and be a little bit more powerful with the propulsion of your foot in that context. And so if you're somebody that likes a bit more structure to the lateral sides of your shoes, and if that's something with your barefoot shoes that you often find that is lacking and you do like, then I think that is a big pro of this model as well. My third pro with this shoe is its overall width. So with this model, you have a pretty wide forefoot and midfoot. There's not an aggressive taper in this shoe. And so I have an E-width foot, and I almost feel like this shoe is almost a little bit big for me in the context of width and length. However, I think if you have an exceptionally wide foot, this shoe is going to really hit for you. And if you have a flat shoe and you don't like any arch at all, that is also where this shoe can excel because despite having these medial sidewalls, there isn't a big off-putting wall here in the medial midfoot where it's gonna be driving into your arch. So I see that as a big perk for folks with flatter and wider feet. And I think if you're constantly battling barefoot shoes, like zero shoes and whatnot, and you're like, these are too narrow, I think this could be a great option to explore. But now let's talk about a couple of cons that I have with the Apex Power 1.5. So two cons that I have with the Apex Power 1.5 is number one, if you're looking for that barefoot shoe that you can deadlift, train in, and then also wear out and about outside of the gym, similar to the original Apex Power, I don't think this is going to be your best bet. So with this model, I think it's very hyper-focused for performance, but it's not necessarily my favorite shoe to wear out and about. Like this doesn't look like a shoe that I would wear with most outfits, and so for that reason, I don't wear them out. And I think if you're trying to get more out of this Vision outsole grip here, you'll actually get more not wearing this shoe in a daily wear context. However, that can be a knock for folks who just like that want that singular do-it-all barefoot shoe for a little bit of everything. So if you're gonna invest in this shoe, do note that it might not be your best shoe for walking out and about and then wearing casually with more formal outfits. The second con that I have with the shoe is I love its width, especially through the forefoot and midfoot. However, I do think if you have a narrower foot, you might actually find this model to be a little bit too big. And so with the sizing of this shoe, for example, in the US, they have like 10 and 10 and a half. I am a true size 10 foot, and I find that I have an exceptional amount of room up here at the end of the forefoot, which does give the shoe a bigger fit. And so what I have to do is I have to really tighten these laces to make sure I'm not sliding around in this model. And so I think if you have a low volume foot or even a narrower foot, and you kind of fall into this category of being in between sizes to an extent regarding the sizing of the Apex Power 1.5, that would definitely be something to consider before investing in the shoe because you might feel like you're kind of swimming around in this model regarding how much room you get in the toe box. The third con that I have with this model is with its tongue construction, it's not exactly the most comfortable. And so this tongue I think is more comfortable than the original Apex Power. So I do like this tongue a tiny bit better. Maybe it's placebo and it's not actually that much different, but it feels better on the foot. I think I've also just been better about wearing longer socks when breaking the shoe in because with the original Apex Power, the tongue could kind of press in. So similarly, this tongue does take a couple weeks to break in, but after about like a week, two weeks of hard sessions, this tongue has got much more malleable, but do keep in mind that if you do have to lace up this midfoot a ton like myself, this tongue can press in because it's not the most padded tongue in the game. So not the biggest deal. It doesn't really hinder the performance of the shoe overall, but I do think there are certain contexts where certain athletes and foot anatomies will feel that more than others. Overall though, the Advances Apex Power 1.5 has been a very strong shoe in the gym, but now let's break down the performance of this model. To chat on the performance of the Advances Apex Power 1.5, I'll discuss how the shoe does for lifting, cross training, and then I'll briefly talk on like short runs and walking. I don't really push this model that hard in that vertical, but I did wear them out and about and for some short runs just to get an idea of how they perform overall. Now in the context of lifting, 
I think this is one of the stronger barefoot shoes, especially in the realm of powerlifting focused athletes. So even if you're not a competitive powerlifter, you're not just necessarily worried about the grip of your shoe for your deadlifts, bench, and squat, I think the shoe can be an awesome option to look into. I don't think you're gonna ever have slip issues in this model, no matter the surface you're training on. And I like the curated outsole in this model and how it's kind of been improved from the first model, which I also didn't have issues with in the grip. So it's almost kind of like this added benefit on a benefit that was never really an issue in the first place. So it like reinforces its ability to really grip that ground when you're pushing into this shoe. And now whether whether you are squatting, deadlifting, or doing machine work, this shoe I think should do a good job. I like how much it articulates. I like that you can take the insole out and it does have a somewhat finished internal construction. And I like how wide the shoe is. So if you want that room to splay your toes and you want a flexible shoe, that's where this model can excel. And overall, it does have a nice amount of flex to it. So as you can see, you can kind of bend this outsole. And so it's a nice blend, I think, of giving you nice lateral structure, but not being so structured to where it's almost like too beefy, like the new tier barefoot shoe, or even like the modus strength that has a little bit more rigidity to the sole as well. Now in the context of cross training, that's where I've been really interested on pushing this shoe because I think a lot of folks already talked about the powerlifting angle in this model, but in the context of cross training, I think the shoe can also be a very viable pick and that's for two reasons. Number one, with this grip, if you're doing plyometrics or various power focused exercises, this model gives you a nice base to really propel yourself on in the floor. So if you're doing broad jumps, for example, box jumps or single leg work, this model's outsole should give you a nice grip to really allow you to balance and feel the ground underneath, but then also propel yourself or break accordingly based on what you're doing. The second reason why I like this model for cross training is Overall, I find them to be pretty dang breathable. And so if you want a shoe that has a lighter weight construction, this model can be a decent pick to look into. It's not the most breathable barefoot shoe in the game, but if you want that shoe that can kind of hold its own, giving your foot a nice climate for cross training and sessions where you're gonna be lifting, jumping, and probably having sweatier feet like myself, this shoe I think did a good job overall at giving you enough ventilation or at least enough breathability to not feel overbearing. And so also with that flexibility and with the overall feel you get with this model, Model. I think that's also a perk of the shoe for cross training. My only gripe with this model for cross training is, again, I don't think if your foot anatomy aligns with a shoe, you're gonna love them for that vertical because I did have a couple of occasions where, for example, I was sliding up into the toe box of the shoe and doing my broad jumps. And so basically I just had to crank my laces tighter, which isn't the biggest deal, but it's also something that I don't wanna necessarily have to do all the time. So keep that in mind if you're gonna be buying the shoe and more of this like athletic style training with them. Now in the context of short runs and walking and daily wear, you can wear this model. You could basically wear any shoe for this vertical. However, I think with this shoe, since it's also only 99.99 USD, I would say just save them for the gym. You'll get a longer lifespan out of them. And because I think one of the biggest perks of this shoe is its outsole and its grip, you'll get more out of this feature if you limit how much you're running in them, how much you're wearing them out and about and walking around. So while they can work, I don't think they're necessarily the most aesthetic shoe for that vertical. And I think you'll get more out of your investment if you just save that vertical for different shoes, or if you just go into this model knowing that, hey, it's not necessarily optimized for it, but I'm gonna make it work and understand that before I buy this model. Hey y'all, just a quick note, if you are thinking about a buying the Advances Apex Power 1.5, if you use the link down below, you'll save 10% and you'll help support the channel. This is not a sponsored video. However, if you do use that link, it does help support the brand, but at the end of the day, use it or don't, I really don't care. I just wanna make sure you find the right shoes for your training needs. So when it comes to the price of the Advances Apex Power 1.5, you can expect to pay $99.99 USD. Now I think if you are that athlete looking for that shoe hyper-focused for lifting or power lifting, honestly, I think that price point makes a lot of sense for this shoe. It is going to excel in that vertical and it's cheaper than models from Vivo Barefoot, which a lot of power lifters already use, which come out to about like 150, 160, even 200 if you're looking into the mode of strength. All right, so now to the question, who should buy the Advances Apex Power 1.5? So number one, if you're looking for a deadlift shoe or a shoe that is designed and optimized specifically for deadlifts, honestly, I don't know if there's gonna be a better option on the market that is as specific as this shoe. So I think if that is you and if that's a big ask for your barefoot shoes or your training footwear, this model will fit your needs really well. 
The second context where I think you should buy this shoe is if you're just a strength athlete or a lifter and you want a very consistent shoe that has good grip, some good lateral support, and a nice level of flexibility and articulation, this can be a great option to look into. I don't think it's a model that just is focused on lifting. You can also use them for cross training and some athletic stuff too. So I do think it's a model that can work really well in the gym in different verticals depending on how you train. But if you have a bigger lifting bias, I think that's where this model is really going to slap. The third context where I think the shoe makes a lot of sense is if you have wider and flatter feet and if you want to save on your barefoot shoes. So with this model, you're going to be paying around 100 USD and they are plenty wide and plenty flat, I think for flatter feet. And so I think if that's you and you're tired of paying like 150 plus for Vivo barefoot shoes, that's where the advances Apex Power 1.5 can come into play. Now, who shouldn't buy this shoe? Number one, if you want a barefoot shoe for both training and daily wear and walking and running and whatnot, I don't think this is gonna be your best bet. And then number two, again, if you have very low volume and narrow feet, definitely either size down with this shoe or consider looking into other models because I'm not convinced the last construction of this model will align with your foot anatomy, but I'll talk a little bit more on that in my sizing section. All right, so when it comes to the sizing and fit of the Advanced Apex Power 1.5, I think you're gonna to wanna to be careful with this shoe. So. For example, some of the US sizes in this shoe are like 10 to 10.5. Now, if you are somebody like myself who wears a size 10, and if you have some amount of room at the end of your toe box traditionally, you might wanna actually go down to a 9.5. In this model, I have a good like inch plus of space at the end of my toe box. I don't necessarily love that. I would rather my shoes be a little bit more snug regarding how much length I have at the end of my toe box. And so if you're similar, you might wanna consider that. And now while I think true to size will be a safe call for most folks, that is definitely an area where I would tread lightly or at least reach out to Avantis to ask for their thoughts on the sizing as well. Now, another caveat with this shoe is, I've mentioned it twice in this video already, is if you have narrower feet or even low volume feet, you might wanna consider sizing down in this shoe or potentially, again, reaching out to Avantis and asking them what they would do for your sizing rec because I don't want you to invest in a shoe that's gonna to be too big, then you're swimming in it, then you have to go through the whole return process. So for narrow feet that you know are like D with feet or even narrower than that, definitely consider that before investing in the shoe or sizing down just to play it safe. So when it comes to the weight, heel, toe drop, and insole in this model, for my size 10 shoe here, that size is either 10 to 10.5, so this is a 44 EU just for additional context, the weight comes out to 11.6 ounces. The heel to toe drop of this shoe is zero millimeters and we don't have a ton of toe spring in this shoe, so again, it's a very flat feeling shoe on the ground. And also this model has a thin foam removable insole that you can take out and it has a pretty finished internal construction so you can train and use them without the insole and not break them down super fast. All right, so now let's break down the construction of the Advances Apex Power 1.5. Up here on the toe box, you have a TPU overlay that wraps from the medial forefoot over here to the lateral forefoot. And then you have a knit upper that extends from the forefoot into the midfoot back here. In the heel, you have a more padded mesh material. So as you can see, the boot is a little bit thicker. This helps give you additional padding and support. There's a bit more structure to this ankle, which I personally like, especially from a lateral performance context or when you're pulling sumo and you're really pressing into the side of the shoe. Looking at the outsole, you have this vision outsole grip here. So this is basically one of the big features of the shoe that give it additional grip. This also wraps up on the lateral and medial side. So as you can see, you have additional sidewalls on this model. There really aren't any points where you're not gonna have grip on this shoe. You have some advances branding back here on the heel. And then looking at the midfoot here, you have one, two, three, four, five core eyelets that go up. The tongue itself is a thin mesh and there is a single loop. The tongue is not gusseted. And then once again, this model's insole is removable. Now in the context of stack height of this shoe, you have a four millimeter thick sole. So the lugs are two millimeters and the rubber itself is two millimeters. And then that insole will obviously add a couple millimeters. But if you were to take that out, you're only gonna have a stack height of four millimeters, which is also why this shoe excels for deadlifting. If you have additional questions on this model's construction, drop a comment down below because I feel like I've hit on most of the big updates and construction features in this shoe. All right guys, that wraps up my review of the Advances Apex Power 1.5. If you have additional questions on this model, drop a comment down below or reach out to me personally, whichever you prefer. And as always, y'all, drop a like on the video, drop a subscribe to the channel. I'll see you in the next one.